Previously on Painter's Guild. We're gonna speed paint. Be as messy as possible. This is the lesson we've been waiting for. Does he look like an orc yet? He looked like an orc before. Now he looks like a badly painted orc. Lowered <laughs> expectations is the key to speed paint. We are back here at Painters Guild one more time with Jordan Nichols and we are right smack dab in the middle of speed painting. It is going absolutely crazy. It's nuts, it's frantic, it's slopping on paint but doing it with technique and we're having a good time. So we are right back smack dab in the middle of painting our... He's an orc brute. Orc brute. So we worked on the one step wash last time. Uh, which is kind of your own technique of mixing the glue and the paint and everything together. Very, very cool. Make sure there wasn't any pooling because I was slopping on too much. No bubbling. Now we're going to work on a little bit more speed detailing. Would that be how you would put it? Absolutely. I'm going to try to cram in as many awesome tips and tricks there that I've taught myself over the last years. Okay, that sounds great. So let's, uh, you know, put on the Reeboks again and see how fast we can run. So where All do we right. start? Well, we've uh, added to our paint selection um, several washes. Uh, my go-tos are simple um, brown and black. Uh, you okay. can get so much done with some browns and blacks here. We are with the Citadels uh, so here So you've got all your metal done? I believe so. All right, so I'm going to yeah, do our next on. step, um, which is um, washing. So yeah, here we got black, so no color. That's just me, personal choice. Some people like that blue metal effect. Yeah, you're not a fan of that. I would be if I was painting like maybe some Space Marine weapons or something. Okay. Because I don't makes know, sense. for some reason, when I think of blue metal, I think of like fancy, high quality metal, not like Orc metal. dirt cheap. Yeah. We melted down your tank and exactly. I made a sword out of it. We right? smelted this like, from the no, ground. There's no, you know, titanium blend alloy. You know, look at this. This is, you know, your tank that I melted down. So we're just washing the metals then? We are washing the metals. All right. And I like to go in heavy. So. Okay. I'm gonna steal some of that. So heavy that when I'm doing a tank, I take that PVA glue, throw it in there. Really? With the washes bam. too? Okay. Um, mostly to get it to cover a large surface, especially if it's flat. If you're trying to wash a large flat surface, all your wash is going to surface tension. Gotcha. And you're gonna get open spaces and pooling and tide marks and but you all, like to be heavy with all your the bad wash, things. With your washes. Like this heavy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you'll see how this is gonna work out. I don't have too much more metal on him. I put a little bit on the front of his feet. Not a lot, so this should go quick. Oh. And I've got a couple pieces here. We got uh, his, We're gonna do his metal spikes there. Metal spikes here. And sometimes I'm even cheating. Like, I won't even wash the underside of his axe. I'll be like, he's on the table. You're never gonna see the underside of his axe. So that's a quick question then. What's the fastest you've ever painted something? I can paint a standard Space Marine unit. Yeah. Um, you know, 10 guys. It came out to 30 minutes of Marine. Wow. That's awesome. I did a insane uh, Space Wolf's commission once. The biggest one I've done is like, never again. It was like 100, it was like 120 Space Wolf You did the Marines. entire, really? And how long did that take you? 30 minutes a man. Oh man, that's insane. That's insane. All right, that's all, I don't have a lot of metal, so that's kind of right, where now, I'm at. After the wash, I'm gonna come back in and look um, for um, some issues here. So we've got some pretty heavy pooling there, which is actually good, right? We want. Maybe it was a little heavy and I'm gonna smooth it out there. Whisk it away a bit. I'm actually kind of moving it around. It okay. Pool, it had unevenly pooled. Gotcha. And if weird things happen, this is where I, I throw that PVA glue in. Oh, right, which is, it kind of keeps it from dripping too, doesn't it, a little bit? It adheres just a little better? It gives it so much more surface tension and you know, glue, so it's not gonna flow as much, so it'll cover and spread better. Gotcha. All right, uh, so I'm done with my metal wash. I think I am done with mine as well. I wanna work away a little bit at the bottom. Speed painting. Here. Switch to your brown. Switch my brown wash. Do we have anything darker? Um, you might be able to. Did you? Here's what we're gonna do. Blue. My favorite thing. Experiment. S Try stuff out. Sweet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this brown wash. Okay. Get some of this brown wash out of here, and we are gonna soup up, supercharge our wash. Okay. So this, this is, is fun. This is just like science at this point. So I'm gonna go in here with our P3 um, Umbral Umber. Gotcha. Say that. The Boone Town Say, Yeah, Stars. right, exactly. They do have great names. Okay, so just grab one, you know, one dip of our paint here and just dump the paint right in the wash. Okay. I think of like this whole like one step wash process as kind of like a spectrum, right? It's all just m messing with the consistencies of your paint to get the effect you want. Okay. So in this case, we're starting with, you know, 
a wash and we're adding pigment to our wash so we get better coverage. Cool. And less flow. I like that. I like that a lot. In fact, I want, I want some glue in mine. <laughs> oh, you are. You're going to glue it up. All right. But not, not as much as we did before. We're just going to do one drop. So okay. we're going to put some glue out here because we want this to look good. Right. It's going to look good. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to get just, um, just about as much as the paint, you know, a brush tip blob. And we're going to blob that in our brown wash. Take your palette and, you know, brush up the palette mm -hmm. and watch how much flows and how much you can see through it, right? Okay. You want to be able good to tip. see, you want to see through it a little bit. So how's, how's yours looking here? Moving around with your brush. Perfect. All right. Wonderful. Excellent. I did something right. <laughs> hey. And we're doing everything brown, right? We, everything we painted tan, we're hitting with this um, dark brown, high, highly pigmented wash. Gotcha. Okay. You want to darken, yep, darken yep. pooling in the recesses, but not pooling on the flats. Copy that. Smoothly That's covered on the flat parts. On camera here, we can see dark pools in all of our recesses, and you know a smooth, even coat over the flat spot here on his pants. And the key to getting a smooth finish, especially when you're speed painting, is multiple light strokes. Okay. If Good you, to know. When I'm painting really fast, I'm in here and I'm like, like this. Multiple right. quick strokes. Done. Uh, we're gonna get the straps here on his arm. We're gonna get the straps on the handle straps here. On the arm. Get oh, I, I touched the axe. Wiped off some wash. Touched the base. We got these handy guys. I want to try this. You should. If, it, if I'm experimenting, fit, right? If I'm in experimenting in mood. Does it fit? It should. Oh Do I need any more brown down? Brown town. Uh, yeah, we got brown here. Okay. And one thing I'm gonna do with my yellow here is straight yellow is looking really bland here. With my yellows, I always love to get um, some brown or even black in there. Okay. So gotcha. I'm just gonna go with black. Okay. And this is for which part? For the yellow. I'm gonna I'm gonna do another step on the yellow. Another wash, quick thin wash. Now, would you do that on a dark color too, like a blue, or no? In your case, with your one step wash, that blue is so much darker than my yellow. You don't need to. Right. That's what I figured. You yeah, could okay. if you wanted, you know, super contrast, really make your mini pop. But probably not. I mean, probably, you're looking pretty good. Gotcha. So I took the brown, added some black, and I'm going to go over all the yellow. And this is great because now I can show you another technique I do. This one I call the finger fade. Okay. This is the finger fade. So make sure your fingers are clean. Okay. Your fingerprint is multiple ridges. Think of it as 50 squeegees. Okay. And now I'm going to run over the mini with my finger on every part that I've washed and take off the wash from the high spots. Cool. And now you're going to see those white streaks coming through from that zenithal highlight. Yeah, that's really cool. Check that out. Good technique. It's like the 50 squeegee technique. It's like I highlighted with white, but I didn't. Yeah, you just wiped it off with your finger. Cool. 50 magic squeegees. Magic squeegee. That's it there right you go. there. Will gets that's credit. Cool. The magic squeegee. The magic technique. squeegee. And you know what? I see a little bit of blue I want to fix. I know we're speed painting, but I still want to fix a little bit. All right, so I've finished with the brown, and now I'll finish with my magic squeegee. We're gonna magic squeegee the arm, magic squeegee the leg. Oh, I'm loving it. I love painting light colors uh, because they do show uh, shades of washes so well. Yeah, 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 definitely. I can definitely see that. <clears throat> All righty. So I got the washes. I think I did yep. my washes on my browns. All right, yeah. Let's see here. Looking really good, really good. Um, a little light on uh, maybe the legs down here. Do a little bit, little yeah. more on the legs. Check out. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Check yeah. out your legs versus my legs. Yeah, so. sure. Make it pop. Will. Make it pop. Make, it, make pop. it pop. Make it pop. You're right. Let's do more of the brown there. Okay, so I'm done washing. I am pretty close wow, too. Nice. I just want to hit this up. The only question is, are we dry? Do we have a dryer? We do. Right over here. Woo! The trick with um, drying in like a speed paint competition setting is. You don't have a dryer. You don't have time to wait around. So it's really critical on, like, washing with as little water as possible. But then you got to jump from spot to spot so you have dry time. Jeez, it's insane. So we're gonna. It's do the a... most stressful 45 minutes of my year. All right. So you go dry, and while you're doing that, why don't we go to the Games Workshop store here in Los Angeles? You're gonna check out some very cool things. Can't wait to see this. This is impressive. Thanks, me. I swear, eating all that pizza is just making me look thinner. We're here with Brian Merlongi, and we're at the Games Workshop store, one of the coolest places in town. I am so excited. This is where the magic happened. Let's go check it out. Yep. Wow. 
Wow, this place is amazing, man. Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Hey, are you Shad? I'm Shad. How you doing, man? Pleasure. Very nice. Thanks nice. for having yeah, us. Nice to Thanks meet you. for having welcome us. To the games Workshop, John. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. This place is absolutely incredible. Thanks. Okay, so one of the questions I get asked all the time is, how do I start from scratch? What kind of paints do I need? Where do I get them? You know, so if somebody walks in here having never done anything, what kind of advice do you give them? So the cool thing about coming into a games workshop or Warhammer store is every store manager is gonna be able to teach you all that stuff. Okay. So you can come in the shop and we will take you from the building process, teach you how to assemble your models. If you've never built a model before, we'll teach you how to do it. We'll take you step by step through the painting process. Oh, I recognize this teach guy. Teach you how to prime them, teach you how to paint, step by step. That is very, very cool. Uh, so do you mind, can we just kind of mill around and check some stuff out? Yeah, and... for sure. All right, I appreciate around. it. Let's go. Awesome. Oh, man. So, Will, this is the entire reason I'm a mini painter. Ray right here in this case. I was on this shopping trip with my mom to Franklin Mills, and there was a Games Workshop store. I would look in the case, and like, these are chaos marines. I would, you know, see stuff painted like that with weathering, or even like some of the scenic bases here. A lot of that is custom sculpted. Yeah, you can tell With that's... green stuff. It looked like a Hollywood set. Yeah, these are cool. And it, it, it changed my life. At that point on, I would said, to myself, I have to get good at this. I'm starting to be able to like look and notice some of the different techniques too, which is kind of cool. Yeah, From yeah. The, so, the dry brushing. So to the these base are coating these too. are very basic. They're base coated and then hit with a wash. Um, and then you've got stuff where I mean, down here you've actually got this is dry brush weathering. And this, this Valkyrie here, that is actually weathered with a sponge. Like we haven't that, done like that, that yet. And we haven't done that we yet. We haven't done that yet. Yeah, you sponge it, it'll it'll look like and simulate rust. Really, yeah, yeah. really cool. And then, I mean, yeah. this guy up here is just... Oh yeah, and honestly, a lot of that is just base coat and washed, right? Look at the edge of the ax with the blood, It's right? base coat and washed, but really well. But super, super well. All yeah. right, so if you don't know what's going on and you yeah. want to start your collection, sure. you know, what do I start with, where do I go? Let's yeah. go check some stuff out Yeah, over yeah, here. yeah, let's go check out yeah, the paints. Yeah, we got brushes and paints. Yeah, yeah. All right, now here we are. Now, okay, so we talked about this before, but one of the things that I hear a lot, you know, on Twitter and all the kind of social media is, hey man, I, I wanna start, but where do I just start from the basics? Do I need to buy every single brush you use? Do I need every single paint you use? Right. Let's start with brushes. What do I need to just kind of basically start painting minis? Technically, you really only need one brush. Okay. The base coat brush is probably the only thing you will need for a while. Okay. If you want to expand, the true essentials are a base coat brush, a artificer brush for like faces and tighter areas, and then a dry brush. Dry okay. brush is kind of the easy, you know, Love easy dry mode. Brushing. Dry brush is easy You can cover so much so quickly. So quickly, yeah. Your next buy, I would say, would be the shade. To throw some shade on your mini. Exactly. Nice. Yeah. So you can start sure. small and then expand as your talent, exactly. like mine, exactly. grows exponentially. Yes. All right, so then moving to our wonderful wall, yes. oh, ridiculous amount of paints. How do you sure. start basically without breaking the bank? So at Games Workshop, it's actually very organized. These are all your base coat paints. Okay. Um, so these are all high pigment count. They're okay. great for base coating. They are for your first application. Except and, for priming, Brian. Priming's uh, actually uh, first. Except, uh, it's okay. You show base me. Base coating's really second. Yes. And then you have my favorite things. Oh, the washes. washes. Yes. Love my washes. Now GW calls them shades and that just gets you all the wonderful yeah, details. Yeah, all the nooks that, and crannies, oh yeah, I yeah. love it. I would say that as a beginner, the shades are not optional. The main shades to get are Agrax Earth Shade and Null Oil. Agrax is a brown wash, named after. I was gonna say. It's kind of my your nickname. Your awesome nickname. <laughs> so, yeah, we won't talk about What's how What's up, brown wash? That brown we wash don't know. Still a terrible nickname. Yeah, We're gonna bad. give you a new one. Um, and Null Oil, and that's black. So okay. black is, is really useful for contrast, right? Sure. And then they have dry brush paint. It's very, um, it's almost like a jelly sort of. So it's thicker. Um, it's thicker and it's perfectly engineered for dry brushing. Okay, so my question for you is, again, I'm just starting off, mm. I don't have a lot of money. Do I come in and put together kind of my set like you did or do I go and I buy a pre-made set? Personally, what I would do if I'm starting out and like, let's say here I'm, I'm doing Nurgle, right? These Nurgle Space Marines. I would buy this set. It's five paints and one wash. It comes with Agrax. And a brush. And a brush. For yes. 15 bucks. For 15 bucks. So you don't have to break the bank. No. Now, if you want to start getting into a little more uh, of a set, I would say, like, this is an entire base paint set. So it comes with all of these base paints. Oh, yeah. A brush. And it comes with a brush. Yep. Okay. Look at the kits. If they match the color scheme you want to do, this is a definite must go. buy. Oh, for sure. Anybody at the store can guide you. All right. Well, uh, thank you so much once again, Brown Wash, for walking <laughs> us through everything here. And of course, we want to thank Games Workshop for not only letting us walk around, but they opened the store specifically yeah. for us to do this. Very, very cool. If you're lucky enough to live near one, 
go and check it out. Back to you, that amazing guy in the studio. Through the magic of something we call blow drying, we're now nice and dry. So, all right, where are we, uh, where are we at in this dry, dry. whirlwind no affair? So, um, let's knock out the metal real quick. Okay. Um, we're gonna do a really bold and bright highlight on it. Cool. And we're gonna do something I call light glints. Light? Like, like the light will be glinting off the armor. Okay, so it's not like light glints, it's like light like glints. Like light gotcha, glints. Gotcha, gotcha. I don't know why yes. this was light, as if the light was hurting me, but I understand what you're saying. Okay, um, so, so what are I you have using? selected our um, Bright Quicksilver. Oh my god, I dropped my guy. Oh. Bright Quicksilver, I don't know if I have that, so I'm gonna have to borrow my, some Mine's already open, just dip in there. On the first layer, I call it side brushing. I literally hold the brush sideways, and drag it across the mini like this. Okay. And that's just on the metal parts? Yeah. Pick an angle, a 45 degree angle. Okay. So like this way across it, yeah, or like this like way that. across it. This way would be good. Maybe too much paint on there. Is there? Hmm. I don't know. It's kinda cool looking actually. Yeah, it looks good. The light glint effect is really good on like a flat blade, where this action of the brush isn't picking up all these little bumps and ridges. Oh, okay. Right? Um, on a blade like this, you're gonna wanna do something like focus on the edge that's con gonna be in contact and use. So okay. I'm gonna go heavy on the inside, this claw hand here, because that's what's gonna get scratched up more. We're gonna do a little bit on his foot here. Yeah, yeah, these guys have so much texture that we don't even have to go in and highlight and do anything else. Scrape up this one just a little bit. I think uh, the technical term for um, this kind of like lightly brushing on top is called overbrushing. Overbrushing, okay. We're, we're brushing over the model and only hitting the high spots. Okay. It's you know similar to a dry brush, but not using a dry brush. And I like to do it sideways, because it helps the bristles not go into the model where we don't want the paint. That makes sense. So I'm gonna do that exact same technique on the orc skin. I'm gonna jump right to the orc skin and you can follow right along after me. And you're gonna do... Uh... So we're gonna go to um, a brighter green are you going with the the, so the Josen, I'm going with or the Josan, um, worm green? Worm green, okay. So it's kind of this, you know, olivey green, more earthy, more earth, little more browns. Okay. I'm going to overbrush his skin. Okay. So the key here is I want I'm going to brush out the paint on my thumb, and I'm flattening out the brush. Okay. I want the brush flat. So if I hold the brush to the camera this way, it's a line. If I hold it this way. It's a flat. Gotcha. So now I'm holding it sideways with that flat. I'm going to drag over him, okay. overbrushing his skin with this lighter green. So it's green. almost like a dry brush? It's like a wet, sloppy dry brush. Kind of, okay. It's a speed, you know. It's a speed, speed slop paint. brush. On the hands, something I like to do is to draw attention to the knuckles. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just going to only drag over the knuckles, there and there. See how um, that hand is popping? So try yeah, that, yeah, try yeah, that very on your cool. hands. Yeah, 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 very cool. And on the muscles, so when I hit his bicep here, if I go this way, the bristles are gonna fall into the ridges. Right, right, right. Um, so I'm gonna orient the model this way, and we're gonna highlight like this. Boom. Swipe. Done. Yeah, 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 yeah. Digging that. All right, um, I'm gonna come back in here and go a little heavier on his back. So here's kind of like one application, and that's not bright enough, so I'm gonna get some more paint. Because okay. it's a large surface, it's gonna right. need more paint. Kind of like, so how's that look? Uh, that's good for a one pass. Um, Do another one? Come in more. Let's bring a little more out on his face. Okay, so and my orc skin is done. I think mine is just about what I wanna. I'm kind of funny. At this point, I'm like feeling like he doesn't have any character. And I'm like, at, at a certain point, it's like I'll like do the base or do a detail. Okay. Just because I want to see the character. So what I'm gonna do is, because I want to. Okay. We're gonna do his eyes. Okay. Orc, I'm down. Orc eyes are fun. Because you don't have. Because <sighs> orc eyes. Really you're gonna love this, Will. Okay. You're gonna love me. You're gonna be like, Jordan. This is the greatest I'm thing ever, ever. I'm only ever painting orcs from now on. Okay. Because an orc eye, you just go bloop, bloop. Okay, and you're doing what? Bloop, red? Bloop. We're gonna do it with red and get a nice fine tip of red. I'm gonna go in sideways. Remember, it's all about the angle, right? Yeah. So I don't wanna get it on his nose. So I'm just gonna literally just bleh. Oh, yeah. I mean, you I go got, in there. I got a little bit of his cheek, I got a little bit of his eyebrow. Yeah. That's you, good, right? Because he's go got in there. evil, glowing orc eyes. And uh, in this case, he's got a scar on this one. We could not paint it so it's dead. Yeah, see, now we're creating a narrative now. That is blah-tastic. Nice! Except maybe even a little more blah on even the left eye Even more blah on the left eye? Yeah, yeah, so it, this is kind of like the red evil glow, right? Okay. So that it's going over is good. 
because they will look glowing and menacing. What's that? That is looking wonderful. Yes, blatastic. So here's here's mine. Maybe even extra blah, right? Oh yeah, you went. Uh, you went. It's almost you went a, crazy. It's a with glow. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like the general of the blah people. So now I'm gonna switch to my fine brush. Okay. So there's no errors here. We're gonna create a bead of paint on the end of the brush, and then we're just gonna take that bead of paint. Yeah. And push it in until it touches the eye somewhere, hopefully on the sculpted pupil, and then we're gonna pull back. Okay, well, let me watch this once because I don't know okay, what so you're, yeah. I'm gonna collect a bunch of paint on the end of my brush here. Okay. And luckily, GW is good. They actually have this bulb of an eye, mm -hmm. eyeball, and I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna, oh, that thing's in the way. Hmm. So I gotta flip it, we gotta go in this way. And I'm just gonna touch this and not shake to the, his eyeball. Boom! Okay, gotcha. So you gotta be careful. It's like you shake so much, it's like you get close and eventually your hand will shake so much that it finally touches the model. Let's see what we got. Let's see if we The can... hardest part of the whole mini, right here. Can you handle yeah, it? Yeah, of course. No. I'm not gonna dot his other side because he's got this scar and we're just gonna pretend it's... We'll see if I can get a tiny dot drop in there. Tiny little touch. He's good. Now he's my good. guy is not good, but that's okay because he's got a bad, had a bad battle injury. Oh, he's leak his eye's see leaking. He's leaking. Okay, so that happens, right? It does. You get if you don't get eye. that, if you don't get that perfect touch, he's gonna leak. All right, what's next? So, <laughs> I want to try my red dot or my yellow dot again. That's fine. I just painted over my red. I painted it over with another blob something. of red. Okay, so I'm gonna try to knock out some techniques here to show you. So, here's instant rivets. Um, I got some black, regular straight black, straight black, and I'm just gonna blob on top of the rivets, like this. Um, if you use that ball technique to get a sharp rivet, or you can just kind of blob on top of it. So we're going to get that in there. Schmirt. We can be a little sloppy here on the black, it's fine. We're just creating um, the shadow around the actual rivet here. And getting a nice dot. Like that dot. Those are wonderful. Sweet. Great job. Great job. So now we're going to switch to white. Pure white. And I can do that kind of touch technique. I'm almost going to look at it sideways, because I just want the rivet to touch the ball of paint on the end. Doink. That's it, tiny, tiny, tiny. That was too tiny. There we go. That's okay. what you want. Okay. This is a very bold, very popping technique. Mine are too small, I Boom. think. That's better. Let me hit um, our, our browns here. Um, okay. So with our browns and like the straps, uh, I'm gonna come back in with our original. Okay, so this is the jackbone, right? Yeah, so we so we painted it jackbone, right. we washed it brown or yep. black, depending on what you're painting, and then yep. we're gonna come in and we're gonna overbrush the base color jackbone again. Um, the key is like on these r ridges here. Mm -hmm. We're coming in and we're just touching the ridges. Just hitting the ridges. On the straps, just get the ridges, but then on the pants, we're gonna you're gonna go in heavier and get more of the surface. It'll kind of give the illusion of two different shades of brown. And on the skull here. I want the skull brighter, so I'm actually going to do the same exact thing, except I'm going to grab some white paint on my brush, mix it in with that brown. All right, and now I'm going to come back in, and I want the skull brighter white. So I'm going to do the same thing, a second step on the skull only. And now it stands out from So the how did you do that? Just with, you That's the same thing, same. but I just went from brown to white. Okay, let me do the brown a little bit here. Yeah, looking good. So yeah, there's your brown. Okay. And then here I got some white for you. Just take that guy and do the exact yeah, same thing right. over the brown. Mm -hmm. And it's just gonna burst right off the model. It looks, oh. looks great. That looks really cool. And then cool. when you've got more time, or spending more time, you know, you can come in here and paint his, you know, jaw a different color, because the orcs are always bolting things mm -hmm. on top of things. Oh, that makes sense. Loving that. All right, man, what do you think? There you have it. Speed painting. Oh, I'm telling you, that's incredible. Here, let's put them up. Really good. <laughs> Still working on it. But man, talk about different techniques in just a really quick amount of time. So don't be afraid to experiment. <laughs> get, get sloppy with your brushes, and it's you can just, learn something. Uh, you can teach yourself something. Thank you so much, Jordan, for coming and joining us and teaching us these techniques. Um, uh, just amazing. It's almost going against some of the stuff we've learned, but that's what you got to learn to move forward. So for you, it was thing very to do, easy. Break the rules. Breaking the Have rules. Fun breaking the rules. All day long, we were slopping paint, which we were told not to do, and 
We were mixing other glue into paint. It was just a lot of cool things to learn. So thank you so much for joining us. And uh, you know, join us again next time. We're gonna be learning some new techniques that are gonna take us to the whole new level in miniature painting. So join us again. And remember, every true masterpiece started with a single brush stroke. Thanks.